Secret guardians, starry bright, fiery ones beyond our sight, saints of yore, Buddhas too, guiding lights to me and you. As a teenager, trying to make it through her days, not to mention a soul trying to figure out her life, Jeanne has had little experience with the opposite sex. Her brief and disastrous relationship with a street kid Brogan was the closest she'd ever come to having a so-called boyfriend. So, when she meets the intriguing Luke Song at an evening gathering with Anna's friends, she has no idea how to deal with the attraction she feels toward him. She's in uncharted territory. The following morning, after a tumultuous breakfast with the same group, tumultuous because of Luke's coming on way too strong with Jim, things settle down after a Luke apology. Though socially inexperienced, Jen, to her credit, hangs in, and even opens up with personal secrets of her own. She would not have done that without sensing that Anna and her friends, headlined by Luke, were kindred souls. Kindred souls? What exactly does that mean? Friends, certainly, but not just any friends. Rather, friends who intuitively understand and resonate with a common purpose in life. Luke articulates that spiritual purpose to Jen during their group's breakfast get-together. Fast forward to Jen's first date with Luke over a simple breakfast at a Belfast bagel shop. The venue may be ordinary, but the conversation is magical. After some friendly banter, the pair go deeper. We get to see, through Jen's eyes, the wonderful day that sets her sails, and Luke's too, for an entire lifetime. There are events in our lives that do that, though we hardly ever realize their importance at the time. I sipped my tea trying to convince myself that he would, in fact, show up. And then, there he was, drinking me in like a parched pilgrim, handsome in his casual way. He offered a playful smirk. Howdy, he said, his eyes sparkling. Or maybe it was just me being sparkled. Hi, I replied shyly. You know... Normally, it's polite to at least let your date offer to pay for your food, he said, raising an eyebrow at my green tea. I'm not so terribly late, am I? I'm sorry. Are we in the Middle Ages? I can get my own breakfast tea. My voice was stern, but I smiled at him to show I was kidding. Well, not at him. I smiled at his shoes. He'd actually come. I did it again. Bad manners. I apologize. It's nice to see you, Jen. Luke slid into the seat across from me with the disarming smile that I'd already learned was a Luke trademark. I nodded in reply, only briefly meeting his dark eyes for fear of falling into them, perhaps. Buying time for my emotions to settle, I tended to my tea. Get a grip, Jen. As the pair settle in to their egg and bagel breakfasts, Luke awkwardly tries to explain his interest in Jen. Now it's his turn to deal with his own attraction to her. Luke returned momentarily with his hands full. Two bagel sandwiches and a coffee in a to-go cup. 
we ate greedily. Luke wiped his mouth on a napkin. The reason I asked if we could do this, well, I'm not sure I have, like, an exact reason, he began nervously. I thought it might be, no, scratch that, I thought it would be fun to get to know you better. Luke's colour was high, and he was stammering like the shy kid asking a girl for her phone number. I was taken aback. Though I was no expert on the opposite sex, I'd seen this scene before. There was a boy in school I'd been casual friends with, but that was as far as it went, and he knew it, or at least I thought he did. Well, you can guess what happened. One day after school, red-faced and sputtering like Luke was now, he asked me out to dinner of all things. I couldn't believe it. I let him down as gently as I could, telling him my grandmother didn't allow me to go on dates, which was the gospel truth. I'm sorry, really sorry, that I came on too strong before, Luke said. I'm harmless, actually. I couldn't suppress my grin. I put my hand over my mouth. What's so funny? He asked, a puzzled frown creasing his brow. You, I replied. One minute you're stumbling over your words like a schoolboy, and the next you're apologizing for coming on strong. Luke's face flushed again. You caught me, he finally managed to say. I guess I'm part schoolboy when it comes to you. He offered a wan smile then retreated into his breakfast, which was fine with me because now I was scarlet. His momentary infatuation with me, schoolboyish or not, had warmed me. Plus, I was starting to relax enough to begin to discern the person behind the attraction, and that was nice. The conversation, unintentionally, turns to Luke's personal life. In particular, his recent breakup with a girl who he obviously loved dearly. Though Jen finds herself struggling with her own emotions, a strange jealousy in particular, nevertheless, in her innate goodness, she forces herself to listen. Luke is worth her undivided attention. She instinctively knows Luke looked at me crossways. You don't really want to hear this. Sure I do, I lied. Actually, it wasn't a total lie. I did want to get to know the intriguing Luke song. I just wasn't too keen on hearing more about the girl who'd stolen his heart. But this was obviously a subject that weighed heavily on him. And if he needed someone to talk to, I could be that person. Luke just sat there for a while, his mind obviously elsewhere. Finally, he shook his head, as if trying to clear his thoughts. We don't need to finish my story because I know the ending, and you can imagine it too. It's a sorry place to linger. By now, my bout with jealousy, another sorry place to linger, had thankfully ended. Luke smiled at me again. An old country song I used to sing says it best. And the drifter shuffles down the highway, headed for the next town down the line. He don't care about tomorrow, cause it's yesterday where he's stuck in time. The words hit me. I flashed on the lost boys drifting on Crumlin Road, slaves to dark events in their yesterdays. Then Jeanne makes a decision to confide in Luke, one of her own personal secrets, her out-of-body journeys that she remembers perfectly. Their so-called first date ends beautifully, with a couple taking a long walk. We spent the rest of the morning meandering down the familiar streets of my childhood, 
sometimes in silence, sometimes chatting like two old friends who hadn't seen each other in who knows how long. Magical times that cause our hearts to soar in wonder are very rare. They are so rare and so beautiful that we cherish them. We remember them for decades. We can recall the exhilaration of such moments, such a day as a drop of a hat. It is enough to make one wonder if, during these rare moments, we are being given tiny glimpses into the true divine nature of things. So until next time, you walk in the light.